Hello. On behalf of the Chest Wall Injury Society, welcome to the SSRF Surgical Exposure video series. In this video, you will be focusing on the keyhole exposure. My name is Dr. Fred Piracci, and I am privileged to share this information with you today. I hope that this and the other videos will help prepare you for some of the common pitfalls associated with this particular exposure. With keyhole exposure, there are five key points to remember, including number one, make your incision over the anterior border of the latissimus dorsi muscle, not necessarily over the rib fractures. Number two, review the CT to determine the relationship of the fractures to the tip of the scapula. This will determine the location of your incision in a superior to inferior plane. Number three, mobilize the latissimus muscle from the surrounding tissues both superiorly and inferiorly. There are no dangerous structures in these planes. Number four, the long thoracic nerve runs in the plane on top of the serratus muscle. Split this muscle away from the nerve. Number five, use a self-retaining retractor and wound protector to aid in exposure. Remember that your CWIS membership gives you access to our internal Slack chat. So don't hesitate to reach out to other SSRF experts for specific case questions and real-time advice. If you are not a member and want more information about the Chest Wall Injury Society, please visit our website at cwisociety.org. Now let's step into the lab with our expert team to demonstrate these principles. In this video, we are privileged to have Drs. Benjamin Christie and Tom White. Hello and welcome to the lab portion of this exposure video. We are fortunate to have Drs. Christie and White who will take us through this exposure which is the keyhole exposure. One of the developments in the technique of SSRF has been a shift away from muscle division towards, in most cases, either muscle splitting or movement of the muscle out of the way. And one fracture pattern that's particularly amenable to this minimally invasive approach are lateral fractures of ribs four through eight. Dr. Christie, would you mind uh, talking us through the surface anatomical considerations for this type of approach? Thank you, Dr. Piriachi, I'm happy to. Related to the surface anatomy, one would like to identify first the fracture's orientation relative to the scapula. You can make out the tip of the scapula and orient yourself and yourself relative to the fracture's position by skin marking the scapula's tip and then obviously keeping your anterior and posterior locations in mind. Other anatomical landmarks would include the latissimus dorsi muscle. Sometimes with gentle palpation, you can feel the edge of this muscle sort of rolling and recognizing that it runs in a more oblique orientation. You can mark that out as well. Um, certainly, uh, if the ribs were displaced bad enough, you can actually feel them through uh, just general compression of the skin and subcutaneous tissues. Once we're marked out, um, in an effort to uh, uh, maintain a minimally, minimally invasive approach, sometimes we'll measure anywhere from four to five centimeters of skin incision expectation. We'll make our skin incision along the length of our expected orientation, or along the length of our um, uh, latissimus dorsi muscles. We'll carry this dissection down through the subcutaneous tissues and uh, make efforts at identifying the fascia overlying the muscular structures beneath. Once we've done that, we can then elevate skin flaps. We can take the subcutaneous tissue off the muscles as far back as we can and as caudal and cephalid as we can. This can be done with electrocartery or a sharp dissection. Dr. White would be so kind. Dr. Christie, are there any vessels or nerves that exist in this plane that you should be concerned with at this point, or can you proceed in an unbridled fashion? You can be unbridled. In the subcutaneous plane, there's absolutely nothing to worry about. Uh, we will run into some structures that deserve merit, uh, that are merit worthy and deserve mention in a little bit. But right now, uh, this is just elevating skin flaps to make our opportunity at creating a keyhole window. So once we've got the skin flaps uh, identified, there are two approaches really. One is you can anticipate the anterior border of the latissimus dorsi muscle, which is running right here. 
The other approach is if your fractures are minimal to, um, are not amenable to elevating and, and lateral, excuse me, um, posteriorizing the latissimus dorsi muscle, you may just split the fibers along the fibers direction. You can split the fi you can identify that direction, split them, and then there's a submuscular plane underneath the lat that will then allow, allow you to elevate it off the chest wall and give you that un unbridled exposure to the uh, bony elements beneath. So here I see the fibers of the latissimus dorsi muscle. So I'm gonna take these fibers along their direction. So I'm splitting and spearing the muscles and I'm not cutting them. And once I'm there, there is a plane that you can develop by just simply using blunt dissection that is avascular. And in this location, I'm behind. There we go. Thank you. This location, I am essentially right on the chest wall. So now that we've come through the muscle, we're in its submuscular plane. We're just gonna identify our ribs and you can see very clearly, this is a probably the sixth rib that's right here in the middle of the incision. Just above it is without a doubt another rib, very easy to identify and expose. And certainly just below it, you can see very easy, easily exposed rib and actually probably a fourth one. So there's four ribs in this really under five centimeter incision that is uh, very amenable to fixation. And sometimes to assist with exposure, we place a wound, wound protector. So you can see uh, now with our, routine, our uh, wound protector, which actually helps uh, expose and retract for us, you can see that within the wound itself, there's two fractures immediately available for fixation. And with just a little bit of upward exposure, you can see there's a third fracture above and with some downward traction, there's a fourth. So you can see easy access to four ribs through a keyhole incision, which in this case is less than five centimeters. Dr. Christie, that's a fantastic exposure. Um, once you've put your fixation devices on and you're ready to close, can you take us through the layered closure? Absolutely. So because you didn't cut muscles, you split them, you do want to reapproximate them. Generally, once uh, everything's been uh, restored, we do want to create uh, muscular coverage and restore anatomical positioning of the muscles. So um, we will close the serratus muscles along its fibers length, generally with a running suture of an absorbable fashion. We will do the same thing with the latissimus dorsi as well. Uh, and this covers our hardware, uh, restores the uh, normal anatomic positioning of the muscles, and then gives us access to the subcutaneous tissues. I will run a uh, absorbable suture in the deep space, and then a subcuticular suture, and then on the skin, sometimes staple, sometimes uh, fine suture with dermabond and all that done through an incision that's less than five centimeters. That's great, thank you both very much.